So I will start to ask a very simple question to put into context what you think about photography. So what, what is it a good image for you? I've edited contact sheets before where I thought I was editing the right pictures and then I'd re-edited them again five, ten years after and my point of view changed. You know, for me when I take a photograph, all of these things come together where it's the composition, it's the, the emotion, the anatomy, it's like this crescendo of uh, aesthetic and emotional things that come together and, and, and come to a, to a pinnacle. And, and at that moment, that feels like that's the right moment, the final moment, the decisive moment. Um, could be the good photograph, but then you go back in your edit and you just start to look through the work and the photographs and you say, well, maybe that's more spontaneous here and that is a better photograph or, um, so it kind of depends what you're going for. I think a good photograph has to be something that evokes a response from an individual or from someone or from yourself. In the interviews that I've read or seen you in, you use the word passion very much. And we all know that you were born in Naples, which is probably the city of passion. So I wonder if there is the Italian in you about that or it's just because you are like that. I think it's partly Italian and and it's partly what I am. I'm Italian. I was born in Italy, in Naples. I grew up there. Emotions are very important for me. Trying to understand emotions and being able to create things that draw emotions from people. That's because I respond emotionally to the world. So that just seems my language. Those early years are probably the most important years in a person's upbringing and, and making. And, um, you know, I'm always referring back to the, that, the first 10 years of my life. And, and those were very emotional. That was a very emotional period for me. Um, and, and those memories are quite powerful. And, and they seem to exist always in the background, even afterwards growing up in New York and, you know, being completely absorbing completely American culture, graffiti, skateboarding, um, I'm in Amer the American language, which is something I learned when I moved there, and television, everything. But you always have, I always have that Italian upbringing in me, behind me, sort of as the foundation of who I am. And, I grew up in a very interesting family. My, my father is a painter and, and my mother is, a, uh, is an artist as well and she styled and she did photography and she was in fashion a lot. Um, and she, you know, worked for Fiorucci and she did, a, you know, she was in fashion. My father is an artist, is a painter. And he was painting a lot of pop art and he was also painting a lot of classical works. And, and they were both kind of hippies, very 1970s. I was born in 71. So that time period was a very free, very open, um, artistic upbringing for me and very um, optimistic, idealistic, love. You know, love was something that my father and my mother kind of infused in my life and brought me up with this idea of love and, and love is connected to freedom and expression is about love and freedom. So to have this like um, mixture of renaissance and pop art and contemporary. and You grew up sort of knowing you were going to be some sort of creative? Yeah, I knew from, I mean, as, far, as early as I can remember, I wanted to be an artist. And I don't know if that's because my father was an artist, but I knew I wanted to be an artist. Your uh, inspiration were not fashion photographer at the beginning. No, I wanted to be a painter and, and, and a sculptor. That, that was my passion at the time. I was also writing graffiti at the time and stuff, so it was, 
really interested in in contemporary culture and you know and, I mean more than interested I was part of it and stuff and I met uh, these two young girls they were uh, studying photography at ICP and they introduced me to photography and slowly somehow photography became more important to me so I kind of what I didn't stop painting, but I wasn't painting. That wasn't my focus anymore. All of a sudden, I, I, I needed to know everything about photography. I needed to learn how to print. I needed to learn everything about the artists that were creating photographs. I stopped going to school. I you know, dropped out of school and, and started educating myself in photography. And it was also interesting being a model because it was it was great on, it was for me really good to understand what it was like to be on both sides of the camera, you know, it, it kind of helped me um, connect with my subjects. I would like to understand how do you live in between these two worlds, you know, you, Mario Sorrenti, the artist who does exactly what he feels like doing, and Mario Sorrenti, the commercial photographer. Yeah. If As I started to grow up and, and, and to understand it all more, I realized that it didn't want to be a fashion photographer, I wanted to be an artist, and, uh, and, and I didn't believe that. I always saw that fashion photography was um, limiting to what I could do and to uh, I, how I could express myself, and it didn't always, um, it wasn't always the way I felt, you know, that I was always serving a purpose. Um, a different purpose, a commercial purpose. And so there was a big struggle, and there was also uh, an existential struggle, and it was uh, a financial struggle, and it was, you know, and I, ba I battled with that for a long time. But I also kept taking fashion pictures because it was fun and exciting, and I got to work with great people, and um, and I also made money so that I could support myself. And, and, that's, and my thinking was, okay, well, at least I can support my artwork. But it wasn't until, a, a, you know, my maybe 30s that I realized that I could, that I felt comfortable being and calling myself a fashion photographer. And also realizing that you, could, you are an artist as a fashion photographer and that um, the, that thing could be one thing. Those two worlds can be one thing somehow. Mm. When you start to look back at history and you start to realize, you know what, Man Ray did fashion images. He created some of my favorite works as some of the most beautiful photographic works. You look at Avedon, Diane Arbus, they worked at a fashion level as well to, to support themselves. Even Robert Frank did for a minute. So you, you do, re, you start to discover that your, your struggle is not unique and that in photography. And it, it does, you know, um, you, there's some incredible artists that are fashion photographers. Mario Sorrenti, when people mention your name, the first thing they think is black and white, nudity, you know, beautiful women in their natural environment. Is it what you are happy to be recognized for or we misunderstand your signature? I love doing nudes. I love, I love anatomy. I love the stripping away of everything. It brings me back to the world and the work that I grew up, that I was, grew up with, you know, the, the Renaissance art. And I guess some of my most recognizable photographs, like the Obsession Campaign with Kate, were black and white and there were nudes, so people, tend to always gravitate to that period um, in my life and stuff. But, and you know, I started only shooting black and white and then when I started, when I was, you know, when I decided that it was time to start, I was kind of pushed, you know, all fashion, they wanted color, color, color all the time. And I was like, 
shooting only black and white. And at one point, I was like, okay, I have to figure out what my color picture is going to look like at this point, you know? So I started experimenting with color film and pushing and pulling film and printing with different tones and things like that. And, you know, also referencing paintings and stuff. And I had to discover my own co color world. I was inspired by the way paintings looked in churches and the way they always looked dark and the lighting was quite dark and the colors looked muted and stuff. So that was the, the, what I was drawn to. So that became my color world and I kind of, I did a lot of fashion work that was um, inspired by those t that tonality and that color. Constructing images and being in control of, of the image from more a painterly perspective has always been my uh, my focus. What do you think about the whole discussion about retouching or not retouching? It went too far. Digital retouching, I think, is part of the process. You know, I think that the way, like, it, for me, like I said, it's like an extension of painting. So when you're painting, you're making decisions that are not necessarily connected to reality anyway and mm. stuff. People have been retouching since the beginning. Separate himself from the others has to have a point of view and an idea. You can't just like ha have a camera in your hand and just take pictures and pictures and pictures and you know, I think you need to go into what you do with a point of view and idea um, that defines what, what your work and what you're about. I was looking at your Pirelli catalog this mm -hmm. morning while I was thinking about, you know, the fact that, what was that? 2012? 13? Yeah, it yeah. was 2012, yeah. So it's like so long time ago in fashion and yeah. trends. Yeah. So as you know better than me, the world has changed in the meantime and it's a beautiful catalogue with all naked women yeah. out in nature. And do you think you could do the same thing today after the Me Too movement and a different yeah. way of looking at women. You know, when I did that catalog, that was not easy to do as well, that, that because at the time Pirelli were a kind of like, um, what they had done in the past was like a kind of sexy women, um, you know, pushing, their pushing, sexuality. pushing the sexuality thing and um, also, there was always an, an element of fashion in the mixture. And that was something that I thought, you know what, I'd really like to do something really pure and strip it down completely and, and not do sexy, but do, you know, kind of uh, pure existential portraits in a way of, of women and, and really do that. And they were like a little scared of it. They were a little freaked out. They were like, oh, we're not sure, da, da, da if it's right, if it's Pirelli and this and I, you know, and also for, to be able to like make that box and take them out from the world that they were so comfortable in, that was kind of a, a, a struggle. And, and, and I think as an artist, I think you're always trying to push people a little bit to a place where maybe they're not so comfortable, but it's like a step forward. The Pirelli catalog was still as well kind of uh, pushed to a place that, you know, you did have to have a structure and they, they wanted you to photograph renowned models and, and actresses. Okay. So you kind of do have restrictions and parameters in that world mm -hmm. as well, you know. Maybe today because it's so become more open and, and the idea of being more inclusive is the trend. Um, that would be different and stuff. But in my career, if you look at my work, I've been photographing women of all sizes for, since the beginning and stuff. And you know, I'm, I get super inspired by women that are voluptuous. And, and that takes me back to the painting and again. That, that's like something the Renaissance. very uh, part of, of my education as an artist. OK, well, it's time to talk about Kate and the book, so you're in London, especially, I guess, for the launch of your new book, Kate, which is very beautiful, by the way, congratulations. Thank you. That book proves, and correct me if I'm wrong, that if you have a good eye and a good model and some passion, you don't need a lot of 
environment around you and entourage to take a good photo. For me, that's what it happened to be, you know, Kate and I were together and as I was taking pictures of everybody else as well, like my brother or my sister or my family or friends, I was taking pictures of, of Kate as well all the time. And uh, photography is photography. It doesn't need to have those fashion elements and it can, it can be a snapshot or it can be something that's completely controlled and set up. I mean, some of the pictures in the book that might look like snapshots were actually staged. You know, oh, there were okay. situations where I said, Kate, okay, come stand here. The light is perfect here. Everything, the clouds look amazing. Just stand here. And that's a form of, of, of staging, you know. And um, Why now? And it's purely by chance, you know, about, you know, eight to ten years ago, I mean, I'm like losing track of time now. We started working on uh, digitizing my archive and my wife. Mary was in charge of that, and she was putting all the negatives and contact sheets in order and scanning them and stuff, and she came across all the pictures, and she was like, wow, these are really beautiful. You should, should do something about this. It's great, and, you know, I didn't really... I was like, yeah, they're great, they're beautiful, and, but I didn't really think about it, and uh, then, you know, and, and then I um, showed some of the pictures to Dennis Friedman, and Dennis was like, wow, these are so amazing. You know, you really have to make a book about this. And I was like, not really sure because I didn't want to make a book on Kate and capitalize on the idea of K and stuff. But, you know, so I said to Dennis, okay, let's edit the pictures. Let's see if there is good photographs here. You know, let's see if there's something that's worthy of a book and making a book. So very loosely, we started editing and, you know, it took like three or four years and we're like, you know, a week here and a week there without any real uh, pressure. And, and then about eight months ago, he came to me and, six, and he said, look, I'm working with Faden. They're a great uh, publishing company. You should consider we should do the book on Kate. And um, I was like, okay. So we really like kicked in and focused in and we were like, let's edit and put it together and see what we have and if it's worth doing. And, you know, when, when we were there, when we started getting the majority of the photographs together, I started to get really excited about the photographs. You know, I was like, wow, this, this is something that I think is, um, you know, personally quite beautiful and valid if, photographically as well, you know? and. Uh, and I was like, okay, let's do it. And then I, I reached out to Kate, and Kate was all fine with it and stuff and wanted it to be something very special, you know, because I think it was something very special in my life. It was the beginning of my career, the beginning of my manhood, the beginning of, uh, you know, just beginning of life, in a sense, of becoming who I am today as a person. and. Um, so it, it was special, and it is special. Do you recognize your style in those photographs? There's something that, even if you like it because it's a beautiful photo that you took a long time ago, would you do anything different? No. Very much looking forward to all of this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you.